There is an exchange between Candace Owens and a student at the University of Albany that has gone viral. Trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today. Additionally, you just pointed out that this man detransitioned, but earlier in your speech... You Guys, speech I want to hear her. Go ahead. What do I have to say? Just, just the question, please. No speech. What is the question? What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who feel actively victimized by your presence here? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. I love when she said, I'm too pregnant for this. It's like when you've traveled all day and you're exhausted and someone does something, you're just like, no, I don't have any time for it. Oh my gosh. I mean, Candace always goes viral, but I think this clip is especially resonating with people. It is blown up on Instagram and Twitter. And I think the reason why it is resonated is because it reflects something that all of us see. Not all of us are Candace Owens and go to a college or university to speak to a bunch of whining liberals. But all of us, whether it's in our own families or in our own jobs, have to deal with people like that questioner. No one asked that girl to come to Candace Owens' talk. She came on her own volition to say that she was feeling victimized by Candace's mere presence, okay? If you are feeling victimized by her mere presence, why are you putting yourself in the position to be victimized by her mere presence? You can stay at home. You don't have to follow Candace. You don't ever have to listen to her or think about her or talk about her a day in your life. But what we see is that there are so many individuals around the country who put themselves in these situations and then lament the fact that they are suffering, allegedly, as a result of being in this situation. That is just not the way that the world works. You know, this video also, I think, indicates something greater that is going on in addition to just these people whining about situations that they have put themselves in. And that is the corruption of words. We hear this girl saying she's being victimized by Candace's mere presence. You cannot be victimized by a presence. We hear these words like victim and even trauma get so thrown around and abused that it actually cheapens in addition to disregarding the actual meaning of the term. Being a victim, according to Marion Webster, means that you are a person who has been harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. Okay? Harmed, injured, or killed. Was that woman harmed, injured, or killed as a result of Candace's presence? She would say yes, because the term even harmed has come to mean something different. There used to be an objective definition of what it meant to harm someone like literally hit someone, you are harming them. Being in front of someone with whom you disagree is not harm. But what happens is students at these universities, in classrooms, in these speeches, they throw around these terms, use them very loosely. And what's happening is that then this abuse of words is creeping into the mainstream where it's actually, in some cases, becoming a code of law to have words so abused. I reported on Julie Noted about a recent scandal surrounding Luis Rubiales, who was, was the president of the Spanish Soccer Federation. When the Spanish women's team won the World Cup a few months ago, he, in a state of enthusiasm, ran over and kissed for literally one second one of the female soccer players. Luis Rubiales is now under investigation for sexual assault assault by the Spanish government. A kiss is not assault. Does that mean that that kiss was okay? No, he probably shouldn't have done it. But really, to say that an unwanted, literally one second kiss is assault? That is such an abuse of the word. But are we surprised? Because it starts off like this. We allow people to say that they're victimized by someone's presence and they're harmed and they suffered trauma. No wonder then we see, even at the highest levels, these words being turned around. Another example is we hear that there is a transgenocide going on. This is a term that is used by lawmakers, by people who are incredibly powerful, not just everyday activists. A genocide is a genocide, okay? There, to my knowledge, is not a trans genocide. In other words, there's not a group of people that is going after trans individuals and trying to kill them in mass. That is what a genocide is, going after a particular 
portion of the population, usually racial, and trying to exterminate them. That is not what is going on. And even the definition of transgenocide admits so. According to Wikipedia, transgenocide is a term that is used by some scholars and activists to describe an elevated level of systemic discrimination and violence against transgender people, okay? Systemic discrimination is not a genocide. It's not. Systemic discrimination is discrimination. Discrimination is different from violence, which is different from genocide. We can't just loop and, and pile in all of these terms as if they are synonymous. Society rests on having gradations, on judging things according to what they really are. I'll give a few more examples. Silence is violence, we often hear. We heard that a lot during 2020, during the Black Lives Matter protests. If you are silent on matters of racial issues, then you are no different than someone who is committing violence against a black person. No, silence is silence. Violence is violence. Words cannot be violent. Words are words. Violence is violence. And people may think, oh, well, these distinctions don't really matter. They do. They really do. Because if we so adopt into the mainstream that words can be violence, then literally we are not far away from living in a society where someone uses their words to say something and our legislature could deem that as violence because it has become so adopted that words are violence. We're not there yet, dear God, hopefully not. But if we continue down this route of legitimizing this, that is the logical outcome. So thank God for people like Candace who just cut this off right when it happens. You know, I think that we conservatives, we really love the free exchange of ideas. We love debating and arguing based on the merits of our position. And we should, of course, do that and seek to uphold that. But sometimes when you get an individual like the one in the video who is so obviously trying to troll, who is so obviously trying to feel bad for themselves and make other people feel bad for themselves and really isn't arguing anything that is truly legitimate and worth listening to. It's so nice to have someone like Candace just be like, go home. It's like a toddler who's complaining. If you sit with the toddler and go, well, you shouldn't be complaining right now because you had a cookie two hours ago and you're going to get a cookie. In no, sometimes you just need to say to the toddler, shut up. You're being a toddler. Go home. So again, thank God for people like Candace who are doing it when all the rest of us want to. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon.